Good morning. Uh, congratulations, you have made it to June. Uh, it is June the 1st, Monday. Um, I can't believe it's this late in the year. <laughs> when you realize that June is the sixth month of the year and you're like, oh man, wow. <laughs> this is the longest, shortest year ever. Um, today I want to talk about the idea, know your limits. Know your limits. We all have limits. Um, and it's best to be aware of them rather than to get blindsided by them. Um, a good example of this would be uh, when you're when you're weight training or, or, or exercising, you're trying to build up to a goal. Um, if you try and without any practice, go out and you know bike a hundred miles, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um, you're you're going to get heat exhaustion. Your muscles are just not. They're just going to give out. Um, you, you won't have the endurance for it. Uh, you, you will probably pass out and fall out, fall off your bike. Um, it's just, it's just not going to happen. You have to train for it. And with that training, you have to know your limits. So as though you're, you're pushing yourself to a goal, um, you, you can't just keep pushing yourself and keep pushing yourself. You have to take days off. Um, if you try and do, you know, you're trying to like build mass, for instance, for, for working out, and you do it every day, it's gonna, you're probably not gonna have the best of results and you have to have a special diet for it. You can't just go into it. You know, um, <laughs> many people have tried to go, you know, um, from no exercise to solving all of their weight problems and all of their exercise problems in, in just one fell swoop and it doesn't work like that. Um, and uh, uh, so, you, you know, the, the, there is certainly that, that, that part where you have to know your limits when you're weight training. And so how does that apply to, to life? Well, know your limits with social media and with the news. Um, you're going to find a lot of things on social media like, like Facebook uh, or, or things on the news that will, um, that will affect you. And see, the, the thing is, is we, we tell ourselves like this. We tell ourselves little things like this. Um, I don't want to be ignorant or I don't want to um, ignore the issues. What I'm talking about isn't ignoring the issues or being... Um, or being ignorant, it is knowing your limits and knowing when to say enough is enough for now. Um, I, you have your mental health to consider, you have your emotional health to consider, and if you keep taxing yourself, um, there comes a breaking point where you'll you'll go too far, um, where you'll go on shutdown mode, um, and, and that's not something that's good. You can experience things like burnout and depression and all kinds of bad things. Um, just from pushing yourself too hard. Now, once again, you know, it's good to know what's going on to a certain degree. It's good to know, um, you know, uh, to not stay ignorant in those kinds of things. But th there comes a point when you have to realize that I have a limit. And I can't push myself past that limit. Um, especially, um, I mean, the, the news. Remember that, that they're making a profit off of this. Um, the more you watch them, the higher their ratings go. So remember, they're not in it for your well-being. They're not in it for the well-being of, of letting you know what's going on in the world. They're in it uh, for the well-being of, of their ratings. And just like, just like you can take the Bible and twist it to say whatever you want it to say, so the same is true of any news, um, news report. You can twist what people say. You can twist what, what happened in a situation to whatever your, your argument is. Um, um, you always see people, uh, uh, you know, businesses capitalizing on the different things that are happening in the world and how to make a profit for it. And it's the exact same thing with other things. So don't stake your emotional and mental health on on the, the, the wild ride that someone else is trying to get you to take. You, there, there comes a point when you have to say, for my well-being, I need to just stop watching the TV just for a little bit. I'm not saying never watch TV again. I'm not saying stay off Facebook for the rest of your world. I'm just saying there comes a point. Just a second, buddy. There comes a point. Just, no, nobody. There comes a point when you have to um, say, you know, this, this, this is this is my limit. This, this is where I can reach, and I, I can't go any further than this. So maybe don't make claims about no. I'm not. I'm not going to be on Facebook for a month. But just know when you're when you're when you're at that point of just being dry and just saying, you know what, I'm today I'm gonna just shut off Facebook. Today I, I'm just gonna turn off the news for today. The the world will still be there <laughs> when when you get back. It, you can take a break. Um, 
Another thing is there's only so much bad news that you can handle at one time. I was talking to my sister, and she was talking about how um, recent events have made people go into somewhat of a, of a trauma. Uh, it, it counts as, as a certain amount of trauma. And with that, realize that when you've experienced a, um, a very disruptive thing that, that breaks your normal flow of life, that has such a big impact, like, for instance, recent events, all that bad news, there, there comes a point when your body just... You need to process the information. You need to detox in a way. You need to you need to work through it. And going from one bad situation to another, you know, we have problems in our families, problems on the news, problems... On, and it gets to be a point where you just have to step back and say, I got to take a break from this. And, and remember that. Know your limits. R limit the, the bad news. And once again, I'm not saying run from your problems. But there comes a point when you have to say, I, I've got I've got my own crap going on. And I can't... Right now, I don't have the physical or, or mental strength to get wrapped up in this other crap going on. You know, like, well, I could give you many examples, but there just comes a point when you have to say, you know, I, I, I got to take today off. I just got to, I just got to, you know, take a break here. And, you know, they're, they're, that's not bad. It doesn't make you a bad person. I also want to encourage you a, a few things that might help, Okay. So I, I, I've, I've talked about the problem. Now let's talk about a few ways that, that might help you. First off, find people who energize you, people who encourage you. Different people will, will you know, kind of do different things to you. Some people, when you're around them, they just kind of drain you. And I'm not saying avoid people. And that's not what I'm saying at all. But when you are already in a weak and susceptible place, find people who encourage you and who, who, who energize you, who, who make you feel better once you're around them. Um... Another good example, another good thing you can do is find a hobby. Find some creative outlet to um, just kind of pour some of that emotion out. Um, I know some people who took up drawing during this time. Just, just it, you don't have to be good at drawing. It's just some way to express yourself, to, to, to release some of that bent, pent up emotion. Um, I personally have been cycling, and I find it very therapeutic. You get out, you get fresh air, um, you, you, see, you see the sights. I mean, it's just great. I, I love it. Find something that works for you. It's like if you want to start exercising, hey, great. Find an exercise that you actually like. What people do is they, they buy a $2,000 treadmill, but they don't like walking or jogging. So it's like, well, what's the good of that? You know, like if you like swimming, you know, that. Swimming is a good thing. If you like walking, well, then that. If you like cycling, then that. But find something that works for you to as a, as a creative outlet. And it doesn't have to be exercise. The great thing about hobbies is it's a hobby. It can be anything. You can learn a language. You can read a book. I mean, anything that, that, that you like. It can be something new or something you've already done. Um, another thing that you could do, um, remember to get good sleep and to eat well. Um, especially at this time, it's really, really easy to just eat a bunch of junk food. I mean, I'm talking to me here. Uh what we put in definitely does affect us. If you're eating greasy things, you're going to find that your thoughts tend to get a little bit darker. Your sleep tends to be a little bit not as good. You don't have as much energy. You feel more drained. E eat like vegetables, for instance. This is this is a great way of just <sighs> letting it go. So uh, watch what you watch what you eat, and definitely, definitely, definitely watch your sleeping habits. Keep record of your sleep. If you're going to sleep at like two or three in the morning. And then you're getting broken sleep, and you know, you, then you're on 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 the TV and stuff all day. It's gonna it's gonna affect you. There comes a point when you have to say, okay, I, my bedtime is I don't know whatever works for you. Some people say nine, some people say eleven, whatever, and then stick with that and make sure you're getting good sleep. They say upwards of six hours, downwards of eight. So try to find somewhere in six to eight hours. Um, another thing, uh, try to find special times and special places every day where you can read the Bible and pray. These are your special times and your special places. For instance, okay, um, every day at 8 o'clock, I'm going to go to my office and read a chapter of the Bible. See, it, it doesn't have to be real elaborate. The point is, once you get into that rut of reading the Bible and praying every day, your problems don't seem so big anymore. And, and you'll find that your anxiety levels will go down, your depression levels will go down. Um, I, I haven't ever been quiet about the fact that I have depression and anxiety. But one thing that I do is, in having a rut of prayer and Bible reading every day, it helps me to be able to keep things under control. And I'm not on medication for that. 
uh, for depression or anxiety. And I, I, I kind of feel like prayer and, and reading the Bible, that for me, that is um, medication. It, it, it helps me to get my thoughts in order. And it helps me to get better sleep. It helps me to, to respond better. And you can I can kind of tell when I haven't been in the Bible because my attitude starts changing. So so then I try and make it up with other things like uh, exercise and those kinds of things. And it's like, well, I'm, I'm ignoring the real problem. The problem is that there's a war in here. And if there's a war in here, <laughs> well, well, then anything out here is not going to be good. If you're not at peace with yourself, you can't possibly be at peace with the world, especially as chaotic as it is right now. Um. So, so find special times and places for reading the Bible. Another thing, listen to music. Music is a great way, a great way to, to just tune off for a little bit. Um, music is, is a wonderful thing. There, there's, there's literally music for every single personality type. There's classical music. There's rap music. There's rock music. I mean, there's, there's hundreds of things in between. Um, and then there's, you know, the, the, the terrible pop music. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> listen to whatever the heck you want. I don't care. Um... But just find uh, find something that is just you know maybe maybe calming. Uh, I like Brian Fallon. Um, I like Kevin Max. Um, I like Theocracy. I like Project Eighty Six. Um, uh, I like Michael W. Smith. Um, I, I listen to a lot of different things. Find something uh, that you like, and remember to listen to music. Music is just a nice way of 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 processing information and, and kind of tuning out a little bit. Um, which once again, you don't want to live your life tuning out, but it's good to have moments of, of just remembering once again, knowing your limits. Um, and then I also have times when you turn off your brain. This means you put down the phone and you just sit there and do nothing. Now you don't want to do this as a regular occurrence every day, but just for five or 10 minutes, just go somewhere quiet without, without the TV, without your phone. It works best, I notice, either early in the morning or late at night because then you have no, no distractions. Um, and and just, just get alone and just let your brain have a rest. Um, the, some people uh, include meditation in this. Meditation is where you take a part of the Bible and you just maybe memorize it or you just think about it. And th this kind of tuning out off will help you just be able to process the information. Our, our brains weren't meant to work at, at such high capacity 24-7. There comes a point, I know sleep does it, but when we're not even getting good sleep and then we're working our brains too hard in the day, there comes a point where your brain can't process any more information. It just can't handle it. So, you know, maybe just find some way, either meditation or just tuning off. Now, if you're a guy, this is going to be really, really easy for you because guys' brains are off most of the time anyways. If you're a woman, this is going to be a little more difficult because you're going to have to learn to quiet your quiet your your thinking. Um, but hey, it'll give you experience to know what it's like to be a guy to have your brain off. Um, anyways, uh, and then another thing is control what you think about. Control what you think about. When you're sitting there, don't just let your let your mind wander about all the things that are worrying you about all your problems um, about. Uh, somebody else, what they did wrong about, you know, sometimes we gossip to ourselves about other people in our inner minds, and that's not a good habit to get into either. Um, all the things that we have to complain about and all this stuff, rather than finding something to be happy about and thankful about. So I, I want to encourage you about that. Control your thinking. When you start realizing that you think about something bad, start thinking about something else consciously. Stop yourself and say, no, I'm going to think about something else. Uh, some things that you can think about, obviously God, <laughs> the Bible. You can think about a, a, a part of the Bible that's, that's really hard to understand. That's something that consumes a lot of your, um, a lot of your thoughts. Uh, another thing is if you're exercising, it'll help you control your thoughts too. Um, or think about uh, something you like, like um, racing or or sports or something like that. Now it's a little bit difficult now because sports are canceled, but um, maybe. Uh, you can, there's there are some sports that are not canceled, okay? Like for instance, I believe cycling is still going on, um, because I mean it's a bike and you're outside. It's really easy to be the whole f six foot distance thing because I mean you're you're on you're on a bike. Um, so I mean I have sports to watch, but um, your mainstream stuff is going to be canceled. So uh, find, maybe find a new sport that you haven't watched before. Um, uh, movies, you know, something that that just just fun, something just. I'm not talking about those high stress movies, okay? Like uh, that one about the um, uh, the <sighs> when they're in LA with the Rock, and he's all on the plane, and the city's falling apart, and it's he's all in the helicopter. And all, I, don't, I don't know what it's called, but something about the San Andreas or something like that. 
Um, I don't watch high stress movies like that. <laughs> watch nice calming movies like, like The Fox and the Hound or Jungle Book or something mellow. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so just in recap, know your limits. Just like when you train uh, for for weights and exercises, you, you you need to you need to know your limits with um, with your mental capacities, with your emotional capacities. Um, and this comes across in social media and the news and bad and, and getting bad news and that kind of stuff. And some of the things that I said to said to help get around people who energize you, uh, find hobbies that will release some of that tension. Um, remember to sleep well and and eat well. Um, find uh, special times and places for reading the Bible as a regular habit for your daily life. Uh, listen to music. Remember to turn off your brain every once in a while and c uh, control what you think about. I hope that that helps. Really, I, I do. Um, it took me a long time to know my limits, especially because I'm a pastor. I always get the idea that I have to keep pushing past my limits. And that's just not true. There's always going to be people who need help. But if you are... If you're overtaxed, you can't help other people too well. Um, you know, obviously you can still help people when you're broken. Obviously that. But if you keep pouring and keep pouring, there comes a point when your brain will literally shut yourself down. This comes across in things like burnout and depression. Your brain will literally turn yourself off. So, I mean, re remember that you have limits. And, uh, and, to, and to take care of yourself, you know, take a shower, you know, get sleep, eat. Those are great things. I hope that this all helps, and uh, have a great uh, rest of the day. Here we come, June. <laughs>